Neil here, back with another custom furnace episode. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling like we are more caught up and better educated than we were with the last set of custom videos, uh, custom furnace videos, and we're actually um, quite a bit farther along, to be honest. Um, I feel, anyways, than we were uh, with our last set of videos. Much more, much more efficient as well. Um, I just threw away a bunch of lids that I need. Beautiful. Beautiful work. <laughs> Why am I recording wasting your time with this? Good lord. I drink way too many energy drinks. That's all I can say. Way too many. Like, to give you an idea, um, or I probably drink uh, three 24 ounce rock stars every day before 2 a before 2 p.m. Yep, I'm at major caffeine withdrawals if I ever quit. Container. Um, you see this right here, this tile entity. I'm glad to click that right there, and we're going to move over here to container. Ah, and we've already done a little bit with this. That's cool. Um, for some reason, our GUI still doesn't like it. It's looking for inventory player and a tile entity for Alabaster Oven, which I kind of feel like we have um, over here. So, hmm, tough to say. Tough to say, but we're going to dig in. We're going to work it out. So, we've got... Um, We've got our constructor right here, essentially, that's referencing inventory player and our inventory. And what we've done is we've set our alabaster oven to tile entity. Um, uh, right here. So, um, that's pretty much there. We have this method down here. This was auto-generated. Um, can a player interact with this? And really, all we want to do is just return true, and then we can ignore this bad boy for a while, for some time. We're going to put all the methods in. We're just not going to fill them all out today. First thing we got to do, though, is we got to add slots. So we're going to be spending a lot of time going back and forth between our GUI, and I put a link up a couple episodes on how where to download that GUI. Put it up on Imager. So let's add these slots in here. Um, I still don't understand why that is like that. You know what? You know what? I bet you a nickel if I do this. If I manually import this bad boy. Dot container. Uh, dot still doesn't like that. Huh. And it wants to put it in here. That's the thing. You know what? I think I think We're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to that. I'm not going to geek out on it right now. Let's get these slots added. So we've said that our alabaster oven is equal to the tile entity, and we have already said that this variable right here matches our tile entity. There. So this dot add slot to container. So this first slot is going to be our slot zero, and that is going to be a new slot spelled correctly, and it is going to reference tile entity, again spelled correctly, and it is going to be slot 0, and we need to find out the x position of slot 0. So we can come over here, we can use our selection tool, and we are going to go from left to right, 
and we can see that our X position is 56. So we'll key that in. Now we need to do our Y position. So from the top, our Y position down to the inside of this box is 35. So we're going to say 35, like so. And that takes care of our first slot. Let's actually, uh, we need a comma here. And let's go ahead and import slot. Next, we're going to add another slot to the container. And it is going to be a new slot. And uh, it is going to be tied to tile entity. And this is going to be for slot one. So where is slot one? Slot one is our fuel slot. So let's get the X position of that. The X position of our fuel slot is eight. So we're going to say eight. And our Y position of this fuel slot is going to be too much 62. 62, like so, close that up. Now there's one last slot that we need, and that is going to be slot 2, right? Which slot 2, as we all know, is this guy right here. So this one's a little different. So this dot add slot to container. Um, and this is going to actually be new slot uh, furnace and that of course is going to be tied not to tile entity but to inventory dot player and tile entity so it will be it, it is it is tied to that yes um, and so this will be slot two and now we need to get to coordinates for this container you'll see that this container is a lot bigger um, so really what we want to do is we want to come four in all the way around. So as you can see here, we have four boxes from the left, four boxes from the right, right here, and right here. So really what we want to do is to get our X position, we will start here, go all the way to the left, 116. Our Y position coming back here, and we're going to start at the fourth box down, all the way up to the top is going to be 35. Just like so. Close that up, and we're going to import slot furnace. So that actually takes care of our slots. Um, the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually build in. The rest of these slots and we kind of talked about this in the last series the crappy series of videos we need to go through one by one each row and add in these nine second row these nine third row these nine so it'll actually be uh, but yeah let's just get into that so um, we're going to use some for loops so we're going to say for int i equals zero as long as I is less than three, so it's going to go from zero to one to two. That's going to be three rows right there. I plus plus. So it's going to loop through this three times, one for each row, and we're going to do another one for each item in that row. So for um, int j is equal to zero. As long as j is less than 9, we are going to increment that. Plus, plus. Not underscore, underscore. Plus, plus. And what we're going to do is we're going to say this dot add slot to container. And it is going to be a new slot inventory. And so we are going to say J. So what is J? J is the first box in the first row. So we are going to say J plus I plus 
times 9. J plus I times 9. Oh, my. Times 9 plus 9. Okay, so J is 0, I is 0. So 0 plus 0 times 9. 0 times 9 is 0. So really what we're saying is 0 plus 0 plus 9. What does that equal? It equals 9. So when we come over here and we look, what is 9 in? It actually takes us right to the inside of this bounding box. This is where this, this box starts, is at 9, right? Follow me? And then we are going to have 8. This is That was the x-axis. This is the y. 8 plus j. Times 18. Wait, is that x? Hmm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Um, 84. Let's just finish this out. I times 18. So with these two for loops, really what's going to happen is it's going to write out all nine of the slots. Um, what is 8 plus j? We know j is 0. So what is 8? Oh, you know what? This is the this is this is the slot itself and this is your x position. 8 j is 0 times 18. Ugh. There we go. 8 and then it starts 8 9 you know what? I'm confuzzled. I ain't even sure. I don't even know right now. I know the last one, 84. 84 is essentially going to be this right here. I know that it works. You know why I know that it works? Vanilla code told me to. And then it's going to be I times 18, right? According to our code, I times 18. Well, how much is 18? Right, I is 0 on the first one, so we know that it starts here just at 84. And 84 plus 18, we actually go from here to here. We'll see is 18, so it starts on the next one all the way down. Next that we need to do is we need to add this row right here. So let's do that. We're going to go after this for loop, and we're going to do another for loop for int i equals 0. We only need to do this one, one row, so we're going to put our 9 of them in there. It's less than 9, and this will be i. We can increment that by 1 each time, and then this will be this dot add slot to container. New slot inven inventory inventory I eight plus I times eighteen one forty two one forty two coming here from the top we'll go down to one forty two where does that start? It starts right at the top of these slots. So there we go. So now we've gone through and we've added the code to add in all of our slots to this. Um, what we want to do now is this container is going to be referencing stuff from our tile entity. And in our tile entity, we declared some variables. Um, specifically that indicate the burn time, 
current item burn time and the cook time. So really what we can do is we can just copy and we can paste that information, those variables, in up here right That's the GUI. We don't want that. We want this. We can actually put these right under here. And I'm going to take the descriptions out of this. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to name these last burn time, last current, and then last cook time. Because the container itself, right, we're going to have little containers that show how much fuel is left and what the progress is towards smelting, and we're going to need to send those updates. So we need some communication back and forth between our tile entity and otherwise. Um, so let's go ahead and actually, um, let's create some of the methods that we're going to be using later. I think that we'll do two of those methods. Uh, we're going to build all the methods that we'll use later, but I think we'll actually fill out two of those methods right now. So we're going to start out with public void add crafting to crafters. And really, what is this method for? This method is all about sending progress updates. Um, so then that way you can see uh, everything moving along. And let's go ahead and import crafting. So the next one that we're going to have is going to be public void detect and send changes. This one is also um, going to be about uh, doing those updates. And then we are going to have uh, two more this one is actually going to have at side only side dot client and this one is going to be public void update progress bar and we're just going to say it's going to be a slot and uh, new value like so we need to do some correct spelling we need to do some imports. Imported both of those. Good. So let's actually let's actually tackle this add crafting to crafters right uh, right now. So we're going to need a super dot add crafting to crafters, and this is going to be related to i crafting. The next line is going to be i crafting dot send progress bar update of this slot 0 and it's going to be related to this dot alabaster oven dot cook time you remember those from our tile entity we're going to copy and paste this actually and we're just going to drop this in and we're going to come in and we're going to say 1 and 2 however instead of this being cook time it is going to be burn time and rather than this being cook time, it will be, uh, what was that, current item burn time? Yep, current item burn time. Just like so. Yeah. Let's do our detect and send changes, and then I think we will call it an episode. Um, so once again, we're going to have super dot detect and send changes for int i equals zero. I don't like that space being right there. Nitpicky, I know. Um, so as long as i is less than crafters, no, this dot crafters dot size we will increment that, so I++. plus plus. I crafting, and we'll just call that I crafting, 
equals I crafting this dot crafters dot get and then we need to get I um, this one is pretty straightforward as well so we're going to do a little bit more copy and paste on this so if this dot last cook time does not equal does not equal this dot alabaster oven dot cook time we want to say icrafting dot send progress bar update this zero this this dot alabaster oven dot cook time voila we got an error because we have one too many of those so what we're going to do is we're actually going to copy and paste this once twice last cook time last burn time alabaster oven burn time alabaster oven burn time last cook time we're actually going to uh, last current item burn time right there and then we can just grab this one from right here put that there put that there we're going to need to make sure that our slots right here are updated zero one two and that is our detect and send changes method with the exception of one thing we need to come down here and say this dot last uh, cook time equals this dot alabaster oven dot cook time this dot last burn time equals this dot alabaster oven you see how we're just pulling these things over from the tile entity this dot burn time and then this dot current item last current item burn time equals this dot alabaster oven dot current item burn time voila like so like so so that is a really good start on our container I'm gonna do some research on this error and find out what's going on with that because I don't think that I am doing something entirely right there and oh my gosh new <laughs> I feel silly I feel very silly and we actually don't need that save it goodness you gotta you gotta spend some time away from your code and then come back and look at it again then you're like ah that makes sense that totally makes sense. Are you kidding me? Of course it does. Um, let's run it. I want to see what happens. I want to see. I want to see if we're just going to have this horrendous crash. We have no errors at this point, but there's still a lot of methods in there where it just doesn't know uh, what to do. We right-click on it. Yeah, container alabaster oven. So there's a slot. There's a slot. There's a slot. Um, we have all of these, but we don't have any of those. Yeah, there's nothing to put in there. Um, it looks like we're actually missing. Um, we're completely missing our background. You'll see that we got that inventory moved over there. That's cool. Um, you know what I need to do after all this time that I haven't done at all? At all? Uh, do I still have that old one in here? We do. Tile dot alabaster oven idle equals um, alabaster oven. Copy pasta. Let's take out idle. 
active. Not that we'll ever see that, but just in case. Let's jump back in and see what we have now. Well, at least it shows up right there. No, it doesn't. And I know why. Because I missed a piece. And you guys were like, dude, you missed a piece. You missed a piece. And I'm like, whatever. I'm just sitting here talking. Rolling forward. All right. So that pretty much concludes this episode. Um, yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't hesitate, like I said, to reach out to me if you need any help. Obviously, if you're reaching out for help right this second, I'm a little busy because I'm just pumping out these episodes, episode after episode after episode. I'm on D&D, on Skype, and that's just so that way I don't get the crazy sounds and the screen pops and stuff like that. Um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. This is Neil. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you. We're going to come back next episode, do some more container. Lots of love. LOL. Uh,